Welcome to On the Record. I'm here with Greg Myers from Tech Data, uh, Tech Data Canada, that is, and you're the VP of Marketing, correct? That's correct, Robert, for the last uh, 12 years here at Tech Data Canada. 12 years. So I first met Greg, I guess, about 20, 21, 22 years ago when I came into your office at NEC to try to sell you a, a simple flyer program, and since then we've done a ton of stuff together. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, and it's been a lot of fun. And not only that, but with the Channel and Advisory Council, you helped us start that, and you co-chaired that for years and years, and um, as we're gonna re resurrect it, we're gonna make sure that we tap into you again. That sounds exciting. I've been in this industry now for almost 30 years, so uh, it, it, you're right. It has been a lot of fun and a lot of great opportunities, and, and uh, very happy here at Tech Data supporting our partners across Canada. Yeah, I just wish that you would have mentioned the 30 years because you're dating both of uh -huh. us. Um, it's amazing. They we're both, what, 33, 34 years old? Something, like, something like that, Robert, yes. 30 years. <laughs> um, so what I really want to talk to you about today is what the new role of a distribution is, of, of, or a distributor is, because it's really not the same thing as what it used to be. So from your point of view, um, what's changed? Sure. Well, I think uh, our business continues to evolve. There's no question about that. And uh, as much as there's change around us, there's also uh, the continued requirement for consistency and execution. And that's a significant part of the value that distribution brings to both our upstream customers in the vendor community as well as our downstream customers uh, within the, the reseller channel. So I think about some of the things like uh, logistics support, credit support, sales support, just you know, being able to manage the sales order process on a consistent basis, that being part of our traditional and fundamental value to, to partners. That, that really hasn't changed. And we've continued to invest in new systems to support uh, higher turnaround on, on more and more types of transactions. So it's not the kind of uh, business where you, know, you, you, you set that in stone and expect that that service level will be competitive and compelling over time. Uh, quite the opposite. We continue to invest in new systems that bring more information to partners uh, more easily, a lot of it via the web, of course, uh, to simplify uh, their purchasing activities with us. But I think where there is a lot of change, Robert, is really around the more progressive side of our value proposition. Uh, and that's those are the activities that really drive more entanglement with partners. And you know we operate within a, within an ecosystem of partners, again, vendors and, and resellers, and our role is to simplify communication, simplify logistics, uh, to speed the time to market for new products. So I think about our progressive value in particular as it relates to the emerging data center opportunity and the growth in servers, networking, storage. Uh, HP calls it the adaptive enterprise. Uh, all of the major vendors are focused on new data center solutions that, um, that are more complex, quite frankly, and require uh, more of the reseller to assemble the correct solutions. So we've made a lot of investments in pre-sales configuration resources. Uh, a lot of people are very surprised to learn that we have over 30 technical people here at Tech Data Canada that are uh, supporting pre-sales configuration requirements and delivering uh, fully configured and assembled uh, systems from our ISO 9000 configuration center. So, obviously, you still do all the pick, pack, and ship, but that's a small part, uh, or a, one small part. Or it's the, I guess it's, it's the basics of. Yeah, I'd say it's one. It, it, it's one big part, yeah. uh, for sure. But, but uh, you're quite right that partners are looking for more support from distributors, and it's increasingly difficult to distinguish yourself. Uh, purely on uh, on pick, pack, and ship. That remains fundamental, but certainly support of virtual products is becoming uh, increasingly important to partners as they sell more uh, software solutions, uh, warranty solutions, uh, all kinds of services that vendors are offering uh, through the channel uh, have to be configured and delivered through uh, through tech data. Yeah, so. On my way over to see you today, I told you I spoke with Tim Kerr. Tim uh, runs the, uh, what's it called, the Global Distribution 
Technology or the Global Technology Distribution Council. That's correct. Um, which is all about explaining mostly to the vendor world, I would think, but it's also the VAR world and to the rest of the world the value of what a distributor uh, brings to the table. And I was telling him on the way up that I've been doing a lot of work with companies out of Israel and out of England and so on. And in particular, yesterday I got a call from a, a person who owns a, an association there for, they have 87 members who are all in the cloud space and they want to know how we can get help them get into the North American marketplace, so Canada and the U.S. And their comment to me was, at one point, halfway through the conversation, was, uh, so if we work with you, does that mean we don't need to, to work through a distributor? And my comment to them was, no, it means that if you don't work with a distributor, the chances are I can't help you get into this right. marketplace. Right. And they couldn't understand that. And that's why we saw on the phone with Tim today that you know it's time to go back into webinars and to explain to companies coming into North America why they really need a distributor, despite the fact that I think I can do a whole lot of things to help them. Um, you know, I can take them from probably zero to ten, <coughs> but to get from zero to a hundred, they need a distributor hev heavily involved in most cases, not everything. Mm -hmm. Almost different. Yeah, I think the new cloud model and the new uh, the evolution of the data center uh, certainly continues to confirm the requirement for uh, strong logistics support in building solutions. These new solutions architected uh, product sets from vendors uh, require uh, this complexity requires configuration both in the uh, upfront uh, building of the solution as well as in the ultimate delivery of the physical product. Mm -hmm. <coughs> We're going to have to take a break right here because I got to get some water. <coughs> Excuse me. I should have grabbed a bottle before I sat down. Would you like one, Robert? Sure. Sorry about that. That's okay. Surely you can edit that. <laughs> That's Greg Myers at his best. There you go. Okay. Back. So, good start from the beginning of that. So, I guess where I really want you to answer for me is, what do you think those in this new world of cloud computing and managed services and data centers, where does a distributor like tech data play an important role? Well, you know, what's consistent with data center and, and cloud computing is there is the requirement for significant amounts of, of uh, hardware and software provisioning. So. Uh, in my many years in this industry, we've seen a number of, of computing models emerge and evolve uh, only to uh, reach a saturation point where a new model uh, takes over. So I think that's where we are with cloud computing today and over the next 10 years as solutions architected product sets become more available from vendors, the distributor is going to be a vital link in assisting resellers in understanding all of those complexities and and the provisioning uh, to bring those solutions to market. So I don't look at cloud computing or the data center opportunity from a physical logistics point of view uh, very much differently than, than uh, you know, the, the year of the land or the evolution of the network or, or client server computing. Um, some say what's old is new and what's new is old. Uh, the technology continues to develop. Uh, and the channel, most importantly, continues to be central in the vendor's strategy for delivering these solutions, particularly to the small and medium enterprise marketplace, which is where I think we'll see uh, a lot of uh, development of applications and new business models, quite frankly, as a result of cloud technologies. Yeah, it's interesting because when you say what, you know, nothing's new and nothing's old, um, you have your timeshare before, right? your time sharing and computing, and then you had um, disaster recovery centers, and then we went to thin client. Mm -hmm. um, all we've done now with the cloud, in my opinion, is one, the technology is better, but that's everywhere in the world. But the other thing is that we've made it more sexy. The cloud somehow sounds, it's catching on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think there's also some significant economic uh, benefit that comes from cloud computing. And when you consider that more sophisticated applications are going to be able to be delivered uh, seamlessly through the cloud on a subscription basis, um, where a broad set of SMB customers are going to be able to leverage the investment in a data center, that's what's fundamentally changing in the model. So it's, 
not only the technology itself, but it's the acquisition and procurement methodology uh, to support computing within enterprise environments as well as within small companies. So as we go forward for in the SMB space, you're able to get, a, and I hate to use this term because it's so overused, but enterprise class solutions for the SMB where they can afford them. Um, but th those are apps. Is tech data going to get heavily involved in apps? Yeah, I mean, it really does come down to the applications and with the proliferation of handheld devices, mobile devices, um, we all begin to understand just how, how uh, valuable the applications are in the hands of the users. So yes, to answer your question, tech data is uh, midway through the development uh, of a new cloud-based architecture uh, for supporting our partners and their software licensing needs. We've announced Stream One as a new platform uh, at Tech Data in the U.S. We launched this initiative earlier uh, last year, and in fact, we'll be launching Stream One in Canada on February 22nd. This technology will allow resellers to uh, select, configure, and qualify complex virtual sales orders on a self-serve basis, and this technology is all delivered through the Tech Data Cloud. So I think the availability of applications, not only from the, the largest uh, uh, application service providers, Microsoft, Oracle, Trend, and all of the other uh, large software vendors, you'll see more and more code available from Tech Data from smaller ISVs that are bringing uh, compelling technology to market, yet haven't been able to find uh, the proper platform to economically make these uh, products available. So, so my average phone call is with an ISV. Uh, and there'll be an ISV out of somewhere outside of North America. So they don't know the North American marketplace very well. They want to get in there because it's 55% roughly of the world's market. So it's a real important marketplace for them to be in. And the very first thing that pretty much that we talk about is, well, we don't want to go through distribution. And my comment to them always is why? And their comeback is, well, because it's going to increase our cost too much. Well, first of all, there's software. So their cost base isn't all that high. But the reality is, do you think it's going to increase their cost and it's the wrong way to go? Like, I mean, wh what are the compelling reasons why they should? Well, you know, most fundamentally, distributors have always provided an aggregation point in the marketplace. Um, hundreds of thousands of resellers globally uh, engage tech data and, and, uh, and source, you know, five or six hundred vendors' uh, unique product lines and are able to get, you know, product information, configuration support, all of the pre-sales configuration support that allows a reseller to confidently choose the, the right set of products, whether they're software or hardware. So again, I think the fact that we uh, provide that aggregation value has convinced more and more vendors of the value of distribution, especially as it relates to the emerging SMB marketplace. So regardless of a vendor's profile, uh, their footprint, their experience in selling product direct to end users or direct to resellers, there's growing momentum, and we see this in so many vendors who are taking products that were previously uh, brought to market not through distribution. We see them bringing those products uh, to distribution because of the economies uh, from a cost point of view that you described, uh, as well as the service, the customer service aspect, the, the simplification that comes from resellers being able to source so many diverse products from tech data. It was interesting. I got a press release yesterday, so I can talk about it because it's a press release from EMC saying that uh, they don't want to go through the big resellers directly anymore, such as Dow or CDW, um, but that they want to go back into distribution because they need that that somebody who can explain to that small bar who's selling to that small SMB customer what the product is, what the value is. And when you get into an app, I know there's no hardware and you pe everybody thinks you can just download an app and use it. Well, that might be true if, you're, if it's an app for um, to play music on your iPhone. But if you're talking about the business world, it's going to integrate with everything else you're doing. Right. And if the VARs don't know what that product is, and, if you know, and you have to find a way to get it there, 
Um, they're not going to recommend your product because they don't know it. Um, like just at that basic level even, if we have a distribution, if a distributor who has a relationship with a VAR and the VAR phones them up and says, you know, I'm trying to do this and this and this, um, I'm not saying that you can go all the way and show them all the levels right through, but you sure, you, you sure have always, and I can't imagine it will ever change, be the ones who are going to say to the VARs, you know, okay, well, here's the things that you need to know, and here's where you have to get started, and, here, and here's some apps that will fit in there. It's just going to be part of your day-to-day -day service that you can offer. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, our, our, our sales specialists, as an example, you know, take uh, thousands of calls on a monthly basis from partners looking for specific, detailed uh, configuration information. It's often about how do I configure the solution uh, to meet the technical requirements as well as make sure that we're presenting a cost-effective quote. You know, you never want to over-license a customer or, uh, or over-spec against a requirement. It's tough to be competitive and win business if you're quoting more than the customer is asking for. So our sales specialists in working with vendors have become, uh, they, they really become experts at helping the reseller uh, have the confidence to represent a quote that again, it'll provide the technical compliance as well as the most economic solution uh, for that licensing product set or for that uh, integrated solution. So much of what we do today is, I mean, we still sell point products, of course, and there's always requirements for, for specific product purchases, but more and more, we're involved in large uh, corporate rollouts where you're taking hardware, software, uh, a particular image from an end user customer and building that solution, testing that solution, uh, and making sure that when that system is packaged up and, and ships to the customer, that the customer is going to be delighted when they open the box. And increasingly, uh, these shipments are being met by technicians, by reseller technicians, by end user technicians, or tech data technicians that resellers uh, engage to ensure that there is a clean and, and, uh, and efficient installation of the, of the equipment. So implementation services as it relates to configured solutions, uh, I think is, has become a best practice at tech data and it's something that more and more resellers are leveraging. They're recognizing that they can focus all of their energy on the customer while we're busy configuring the solution, qualifying the solution with the vendor, and as I said, delivering that for a um, delightful customer experience. Yeah, I remember it's got to be at least 15 years ago sitting around a table with you and talking about where, where you were saying that you know we're, we're not selling computers and monitors. We have to sell solutions, and I fully, I fully agree with you back then. I, but I think what's happening now in the world is uh, finally the industry is really trying to get for the SMB marketplace where we're selling solutions, and the VARs that don't get that, get that unless they're running a really, really efficient, large, um, you know, somebody like like a CDW who is able to turn a ton of product over. Mm -hmm. For the average bar, if all they're doing is selling hardware, they're going to be in a lot of trouble. Right, right. Um, I think organizations like, like CDW do exceptionally well in supporting customers that have an IT infrastructure of their own and an IT staff of their own where they can receive product, install product, and, and make sure that uh, the applications are supported properly. And where we find uh, the traditional reseller, the more solutions-oriented reseller being active and delivering that solution is within small businesses that lack those resources themselves. Yeah, and of course, the they advisor. become the trusted business advisor Sorry, in, in, in your vernacular, exactly, and, and really become that outsourced IT department for that small, small business. Now, having said that, a lot of small businesses and, and new age companies are quite savvy as it relates to new technology and the web and social media and, and so many of the other applications that are streamlining business applications. So VARs need to continue to educate themselves uh, to ensure that they're able to deliver value to all types of customers. Absolutely. Um, we got about one minute. So in that one minute, there's some new solutions that you're putting for, that you, you're uh, responsible for. Tell me about them. Sure. So I, I think what we're most excited about 
this year is, is data center and cloud. And I don't think we're unique in that. Um, and we're adjusting our organization to, to support the new requirements. I think about uh, our new uh, Advanced Technology Solution Center 2.0, ATSC 2.0, uh, which will demonstrate, uh, provide real live applications for resellers to bring their end customers in to see the technology um, demonstrated. Uh, we've just completed construction downstairs, in fact, uh, an expansion of our technology center where we'll be demonstrating data center applications, networking applications, security applications, digital signage applications, really the whole ecosystem of products that um, are driving uh, the marketplace today. So the ability to demonstrate uh, the technology I think is valuable to partners and you couple that with our ability to assist partners in the configuration and delivery of complex systems uh, those are the attributes that I think are attracting more and more customers to tech data these days. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and what you've done is you're making it easier for them to deliver the solution. That's correct. Absolutely terrific. As always, Greg, it's been a pleasure. Thanks very much, Robert.